one adventure tour. Right? So, if you are interested in participating in this program, uh, feel free to follow the link um, pinned on the first comment there under the um, under this live. Also, we would like to take this opportunity to ask if you have or can donate uh, materials that we could use here at the clinic, or if you would prefer to donate monetarily, um, you can also use this QR code that is up on your screen uh, to send us a PayPal, right? That's right. So this is a link to our PayPal donate um, link. So you can just always scan the QR code there. And um, not only that, there's many more ways you can donate to the uh, clinic, like that, like Calvin said. All right. <clears throat> so yes, we uh, we are so happy to accept your donations and uh, um, join us. Join us for this ambassador program. It's getting exciting. New things are happening. Um, we want to share that very soon we will be working with a large group of police officers for uh, trainings and workshops to be able to um, kick off with our wildlife ambassador program workshops. And it we would be more than happy to have you join us um, for this um, the series of workshops and trainings so that we'll be able to um, just uh, give out the information that we have prepared for you all. all right. So, oh, um, before moving on, uh, this past weekend was the Chickabull Challenge Marathon. And despite the rain that um, we got on the way there, <laughs> it turned out to be a pretty good um, marathon. We would like to thank our donors for uh, donating all the prizes for the winners of the marathon and all the service teams that uh, accompanied their runners and, and also all the runners that participated in this year's Chicken Bull Challenge Marathon. And we hope to see you and many more next year, which will hopefully be uh, the set date like we had back in March. That is right. It was an exciting experience. It was my first time um, uh, uh, participating, well, not participating, but helping out with the Chickable Challenge Marathon. And I do think it is, it, it's a once in a lifetime experience. So from now, join us next year. Um, sign up your team or if you want to run, um, sign up. There, there's a quick photo of the group. Um, that was up there at Chickable this weekend. So very exciting. Um, and congrats to all the winners as well um, for your hard work and your participation on the race. So I think with that, we can move on to our first topic for the day, Calvin. Yes, and the first topic for the day is the zoonosis um, topic which is leptospirosis and Dr. Isabel will be um, presenting that for us. That's right, I'll just give her the seeds to take over. Okay. Thank you. And so for today, I do not have a PowerPoint, but I will share with you a fact sheet. Uh, for a short and sweet version. I will, however, still prepare a proper presentation uh, that goes a bit more in depth um, to upload on the website in the future as well. So today's zoonosis is leptospirosis and I wonder, do I need to sit there? Okay. <laughs> I wonder how many people in the audience may have heard of this disease so far. Uh, it is, in fact, quite widespread worldwide. Um, this is a disease that is caused by a bacterium and uh, affects multiple species and can indeed be fatal in humans. 
And while I do not remember the exact date, I do know for a fact that we have had a human fatality here in Belize due to leptospirosis after one of the last floods, which is one of the common ways how humans may get this infection. So the most common routes that humans can become infected with leptospirosis is through coming in contact with contaminated water. And that water uh, will be contaminated most commonly by rodents, rodent urine. So the other way of getting this disease is by getting in contact with the urine of infected animals. The symptoms, as you will recognize for many of these diseases, are pretty broad. So a human will develop symptoms of this disease within anywhere between two days or four weeks of exposure, and then develop common flu-like symptoms with fever, chills, headache, muscle aches, maybe vomiting and diarrhea, abdominal pain, and then comes jaundice, which is the yellow discoloration caused by liver failure. We can also see skin rashes and red eyes. Uh, what ultimately may cause death in humans is uh, acute kidney failure. So there is a huge range of species that actually can be affected by leptospirosis. So this bacterium is not very specific, but affects a large range of species. Uh, you can see a list here from the rodents, which serve as the biggest reservoir in the environment for this bacterium, all the way to goats. But you will see that dogs and cats are not listed here, but cats can also carry this. And then, are you at risk? Anybody can be at risk when coming into contact with contaminated water, but there are certain professions that are particularly at risk, and those would be mine workers or sewer workers, as well as farmers like rice farmers, for example, because obviously rice is farmed with a lot of water around. Uh, slaughterhouse workers because of exposure to uh, excrements and, of course, veterinarians and animal caretakers, or also fishermen. And the general public can be at risk at as well, and there it's most commonly through this mentioned contact with uh, floodwaters, but you could also uh, um, get infected through uh, outdoor activities like swimming or uh, kayaking if you swallow contaminated water. The treatment of it is with antibiotics, since it is a bacterium. It's pretty specialized antibiotics, and one of the challenges with this disease is that it's often not, um, may not be recognized at first. Um, once diagnosed, uh, antibiotic treatment uh, has a good chance of being successful. But the most important for all of these diseases is how to prevent them. And when we come to preventative measures, what is again the most important for you to do uh, is to keep your pets vaccinated because that usual five and one vaccine actually includes leptospirosis. This protects your pets so that they do not get sick from this while they in the disease form can be that it ranges from showing no symptoms to also developing fatal kidney failure um, you can protect them from that and you can also protect yourself from being exposed in case your animal gets this disease so avoid contact with uh, urine or body fluids uh, and wear gloves um, and remember if you have cuts on the skin and you walk in, in dirty water uh, that is also a way how you could uh, acquire this and yeah wearing protective clothing and foot gear so that's leptospirosis in five minutes <laughs> and please feel free to send any questions you may have either here in the chat or send us an email. And thank you so much for your attention if you haven't fallen asleep. Bye-bye.
Okay, so there we had the presentation on leptospirosis. And since we have completed that presentation, we can move right into the first. Into one health. This is just a small little animation to encourage you guys um, the importance of vaccination. So let's just play that real quick on the screen. Um, and it says keeping your pet healthy also helps you keep healthy, right? And that's by definition um, the concept of a one health and how, you know, taking care of um, animals' health and our environmental health keep us as humans and as, uh, as the human civilization also healthy all right so keep your pets healthy keep yourself healthy keep your surroundings healthy that's all under one health uh now yes let's move on to our first quiz question for the day right so make the same rules apply uh we will show a question on screen uh with multiple um answers you choose all that applies in order for you to get the full um correct answer Right, so they will have multiple correct uh, questions or statements. You choose all and put just the letter on the comments so that you um, can win a prize if you are the first one to answer it correctly. All right, so there we go with question number one. It says, select all two statements about leptospirosis. All right, so select all true statements about leptospirosis. It says it is caused, A, it is caused by a bacteria, B, B, it is caused by a protozoa, C, it is caused by a virus, D, leptospirosis is passed through feces of in uh, of infected animals, E, leptospirosis is passed through the urine of infected animals, F, leptospirosis can be contracted from the environment, uh, that is through contaminated water, and G, vaccinating your pets and avoiding contaminated or flood water is the best practice to avoid leptospirosis. Uh, choose all that apply here in this case so that you can win a small prize from BWRC, right? So choose all that apply. <clears throat> We're watching out to see your comments and we we'll leave it there for just a few. Um, and uh, we might even come back to it. All right, so you, if you want to take a screenshot or write down your question real quick, write down your answers, um, you can do so while we quickly move on to the next presentation, which is how the monk, uh, human and how the monkeys conflict um, here in the deep. All right, so the conflict species of this month for this live is the Mexican black howler monkey. And this monkey is endemic to the Selva Maya, which includes the most parts of the Yucatan Peninsula, uh, northeastern Guatemala, and they can be found throughout all of Belize. And their scientific name for this species of howler monkey is Alua tapigra. So in in total all of all um, species of howler monkey there are 10 and they are new world monkeys that can be found here in Central and South America. And as I mentioned earlier the Alua tapigra is found in Southeast Mexico, which is Yucatan, um, North Guatemala, and throughout Belize. 
these these this species of howler monkey form troops of four to eleven individuals and it usually consists of one alpha male uh, the females and other males that is believed to that they are used for um, defending the troop and may even um, breed with the females <clears throat> now communicating communication between these uh, howler monkeys is as the name suggests done through howling calls and these calls can be heard miles from miles away and they use it to announce their troop or to defend their troops from other troops of howler monkeys they breed year round and produce one off offspring uh, each time they um, give birth and they are mostly found resting up in the canopy which allows them to digest their food um, that they have eaten throughout the day the average lifespan of howler monkeys is about 20 years and they are frugivorous herbivores meaning they eat mostly fruit but they also eat leaves and flowers of um, the trees and their ecological role uh, in the environment they serve as seed dispersers since they eat the fruit and then um, move along the forest canopy and leaving droppings and public health risks that these uh, howler monkeys carry if we should come in contact with them is uh, being warm-blooded animals they can also contract rabies they have external parasites that can affect us such as giardiasis and other intestinal um, parasites the conservation status for this species is uh, list they are listed as threatened under the IUC and red list now um, being that the howler monkeys usually well they are supposed to be up in the canopy most of the time right there is not much conflict since they do not um, purposefully come into our areas to get any resources from us directly but there are cases where you may come across a monkey in your backyard in town or in a village and these would most likely be transient monkeys or uh, you some people call them last monkeys and basically they are migrating individuals uh, usually would be young males that are looking for a new troop or looking to start their own troop and um, there can also be uh, young females that are moving away from their troop um, to find another troop now solutions for this uh, quote-unquote conflict uh, tolerance right since they are moving around looking for different troops or wanting to um, make troops of their own they will move along from your area and what we can do as humans and as wildlife ambassadors and conservation enthusiasts we could avoid harassing them and this includes not um, chasing them away or shooting stoning rocks at them or shooting them with pellets um, these can injure the monkeys that will um, that can cause further complications for you and for the monkey of course and also to keep your pets away especially our dogs that will attack if the monkeys should come down to the um, ground when they are um, stuck on a tree that does not have more um, uh, path that they can follow in the canopy they will come down to climb another tree And and when it comes to monkeys that are around our area, um, it would 
you would want to try to give it food or give it water but it is not recommended since um as Gian will mention later that it is illegal to feed uh, wildlife so giving them food will get them accustomed to humans and not all humans are uh, kind-hearted as to want to give them food right they can um, this can allow the monkey to become habituated and increase the risk of getting injured or even killed so in case there is threat a threat towards the monkey for example a dog attacks or the monkey you see the monkey will want to try to cross a highway you could contact the first department at a22 and they will assist you as they can or you can also call wild trucks at 660-4820 they respond to how their monkey calls um, countrywide and you can also call us for assistance at 615-5159 um in the case that the monkeys will want, need to cross you could keep your dogs away if you have dogs and do not attempt to capture these monkeys because they can injure you or you can injure them as well so why are how their monkeys important well because they eat and see this person see dispersal and they are important for ecotourism except when the tour guides feed them then that becomes a conflict and is also illegal all right very well and that is our conflict species of the month the Mexican or Yucatan black howler monkey, right? So I think we don't have enough questions and it's more than two uh, correct um, Answers, oh, we have someone else answering there um, Let us just cross check that that is correct and I'll just put the question up very quickly um, ZC list the it's a d e f and g very close very close but that is still not um, the correct answer there she has a D no, that's correct. So, a D F G is correct a D E F G is yeah. correct Okay. You can blame it on your last name. All right. So let, let's let's put right. Okay. So there we have the D leptospirosis partial feces, which um, didn't get highlighted there, but is correct. Um, but it is in fact uh, caused by a bacteria. Right. So that first one is correct. That's A. D, it, uh, it may be passed through feces of infected animals as well as urine of infected animals. And of course, uh, if you have infected waters, it will pass to the environment, right? Due to contaminated water. G, obviously, like Dr. Isabel mentioned, vaccinating your pets and avoiding contaminated or flood water is the best practice uh, in terms of avoidance of leptospirosis all right so what's her name again can we that zc list you um you won yourself a small prize from bwrc which includes stickers wristbands and uh, a calendar right so you can just contact us to see how you can pick up your prize um with us here at the clinic all right so real quick i'm gonna move on to question number two so get ready now if you know the answer to the conflict question that um, Calvin just shared, uh, be ready to type that out, right? So um, 
let's read that out real quick. It says, if you see me in your backyard, what should you do? Right? So A says, harass and try to chase me away. B, call F the fire department if I seem injured or in danger. C, panic. D, keep your dogs away. E, try to feed me and give me more, give me water. F, monitor me. I will move along. Right, so choose all that applies again, these multiple answers, um, and put your letters on the comment sections down below. So let's keep it there for a little. Um, so you all can comment your correct answers there. Right, and again, reminding and inviting everyone to be a part of the Wildlife Ambassador Program. Um, it's not too late to join. It's open. You can visit our website as well. If you want to find out more, um, it's just the uh, BelizeWildlifeClinic.com slash Wildlife Ambassador Program. Or you can simply just Google it and you will find information there on our website, um, including what the program is about the topics we will um the topics we will be covering extra information um and your sign up sheet your pre-registration um do we have a correct answer question number two or we move on to um all right so we'll give um some more time for other people to answer. While we quickly move on to the third presentation for the day, hour, uh, which is wildlife law, right? So this has to do with legislation and uh, the same Yucatan black howler monkeys. Um, and like Calvin mentioned, Aulota pigra, it's his species name. All right, so <clears throat> starting off with howler monkeys seen um, here at the clinic. If, I think the howler monkey is a special um, species for us. We've seen about 82 patients um, in the past 10 years, right? Um, within those around 4,000 uh, patients seen um, and 22% of those um, patients of those howler monkey patients were in fact due to illegal wildlife trade right so 22% <clears throat> of those were victims due to that most howler monkeys are either orphans relinquished pets confiscated pets um, and sometimes even uh, victims of legal feeding. You shouldn't feed them, um, and some of them come in due to that. There was one case, an extreme case, which um, I was made mention that it even went to court, which, which uh, we would classify it as an um, animal abuse case where some school children actually um, attacked an animal, they were stoning it, uh, the animal got injured, and the teacher was actually condoning this um, act of abuse, right? Um, so there was that case of abuse once as well, right? So we can see that there is um, a lot of trouble when it comes to these uh, victims of illegal wildlife traffic and trade, right? So like I mentioned, um, the howler monkey, is an iconic species for the clinic. If you notice, um, it is on our logo. Um, we have um, little sparticles there and the, the hand that is holding up, which is um, Dr. Isabel's hand, right? That is the exact picture that inspired the logo. And in fact, it was the first ever patient, right? So very cool and very interesting um, species there with the howler monkeys. Um, Patients here uh, at the clinic, of course, are given vet care if needed, um, a bit of rehabilitation, but usually um, they end 
Well, usually what we would do is transfer them to the full primate rehabilitation center, which is at Wild Trucks in Sartaneja, where uh, they can interact with more of their kind and, and have a more holistic rehabilitation process um, for these little guys, right? <laughs> so again, these are, you know, a few of the facts about other monkeys here at the clinic. Um, and moving on to the Wildlife Protection Act, of course, howler monkeys are fully protected under the Wildlife Protection Act, uh, as all wildlife here in Belize, meaning you can't hunt it, you can't keep it as pets, you can't bother it or disturb it. Um, and obviously, like Calvin mentioned already, you cannot feed it, right? This all is included under the Wildlife Protection Act. Um, so all of these activities would be disallowed. Uh, going to the international scope, um, the howler monkeys are listed under um, endangered uh, and their current population trend is decreasing, right? So, you know, their population are not uh, currently doing better. They're, they're going for worse, right? Um, and their population decline uh, is due to habit loss, fermentation, and even um, legal pets, right? Or little pet trade. When it comes to trade in terms of CITES, um, it is listed under Appendix 1. And this would be the appendix that includes the most uh, protected uh, and close to extinction, um, species close to extinction, right? So here trade is not per permitted unless on very exceptional circumstances, as I read, uh, it would be very, very uh, few cases that would be um, permitted there, uh, except for research and things like that, right? But otherwise, trade is not permitted uh, for this species. Appendix 1, like I mentioned, includes animals in danger of extinction and has higher level of protection. Uh, other than that, you can see these little guys are very uh, social and who would not um, want to get those that little guy back to his mom, right? So should we keep or should we have uh, howler monkeys as pets? Well, the answer, unfortunately, would be no. Why? Um, like the whole concept about One Health, they, they can expose you to diseases, to your family, um, and to also your domestic pets. And you can also give them human diseases since they are very uh, biologically similar to us. They can suffer some of the diseases that we can uh, transmit to them as well. They may get aggressive. Um, if they are deprived of their space and privacy. So um, it wouldn't be that, um, <clears throat> you know, they, they want to get you, but they would get aggressive over time due to, um, you know, being enclosed in a tight space and, and have no privacy, right? They, that's why they usually go up very high on the trees to rest, um, you know, to have that privacy and be away from other creatures, right? So they are very social creatures as well. Um, the orphans, of course, would rely a lot on their mom at a very young age so <clears throat> you know they would miss their mom there uh, and then being social they would like that interaction with other other monkeys and be able to um, you know have that psychological advantage there they also need a special diet to be healthy and, and it's hard to try to match that at home right you wouldn't uh, be able to match exact diet that they need Right. And last but not least, they belong to the wild uh, and that is their home. That is where they belong and that is where they have higher chance of um, surviving, right? So that is wildlife on the law. In short, if you have any questions, still let us know and we shall move on to review the second quiz question. All right, so we have multiple answers for this question, but the first correct answer is from SC Variety. And the answers for this question is B, D, and F. We should call the forest department. If uh, the monkey seems injured or if there is a threat to its life, 
and keeping your dogs away is recommended since they can mm -hmm. attack the monkeys if they come down to the ground and if uh, just monitoring the how their monkeys will be fine if they in in cases that they are no threats to them they will move along after they um, have rested or have eaten what they could in that area So with that, we can move straight into our third question for this um, live session, which is based on the wildlife lab with howler monkeys. Select all, this is a true and false um, question. So select all the statements that apply regarding howler monkeys and the legislation. A, it is protected under the Wildlife Protection Act. B, it is endangered under the IUCN. C, it is listed as least concern under the IUCN. Um, D, it has a decreasing population trend. And E, it is listed under Appendix 1 in, in CITES. Um, For this question, you could list all the true answers on the, in your comments, and we will um, no. <laughs> all right. So you see there if you have your all right. And so while we wait for you to answer this question, we'll leave it up a bit more. But then after we will go into a video done by Wild Traps on a release of a monkey. And monkeys. monkeys, a troop of monkeys. And they will talk about um, why they should not be pets. In a bit. All right, now here the video. People are not the only ones with families. And in Belize, families of monkeys are under attack. Belize is home to the Yucatan black holler monkey and also to the Central American spider monkey. Recently, due to deforestation and the illegal pet trade, the number of our monkeys are declining. They are probably one of the most intelligent animals we have in Belize. They deserve to be out thriving with other members of their species in a natural setting. The male usually takes care of his family and the female takes care of the young as well. They, they care for each other and they're very, very territorial. They need mom and dad to learn their skills to fend for themselves out in the wild. If you take a monkey from the mom, he won't survive for long in a cage. They live shorter lives, they get depressed and aggressive. They do not make good pets. You catch the monkey, you bring it home, put in a cage, you destroy your life. You know, you don't have no benefits for the animal, then you kill the animal. I think that's wrong. They need to be free in the jungle. You create more children, you make a big nation. Many people don't know the species are endangered. So they see a monkey and the first thing they say is my pet. I could, I could do whatever I want with it and it's not like that. Monkeys in Belize are protected. This means that hunting them, hurting them or keeping them as pets is against the law. Primates are very, very important to our environment. They made the jungle alive. They are excellent for keeping the forest growing and healthy and replenished through seed dispersal. A monkey 
important for the tourists, for the benefit for the whole country, all, all nation. And it, it really kind of gives a sense of pride that we're able to say that these monkeys call our country home. A change needs to happen and it can start with you. If you see a monkey injured or endangered, we can help, so please contact the Forest Department. Our people need freedom. A monkey needs freedom too. All right, so that's an interesting video there uh, with the collaboration of Wild Trucks and the Forest Department and um, this organization that manages um, Runaway Creek um, Preserve. Uh, and, you know, hoping that we in the future have a stable um, howler monkey populations in the wild. Um, and that happens to be so in the future and generations to come. All right, so. Turning back to question number three, um, I think we have some answers already. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have the first um, the first comment that we are seeing is from Kiria Chan, and she has the correct answers for that question, um, which is A, B, D, and E. They are protected under the Wildlife Protection Act and listed under endangered in the IUCN Red List and with a decreasing population trend, which has them under the Appendix 1 in the CITES. That is right. So again, um, well, SC Variety is actually my uncle. He won question number three, Kiria, great number two, Kiria won question number three. So you all can contact us um, to see how you can get your small little token uh, for these quiz questions. And congrats to those winners. Um, and of course, in the future, we have uh, more quiz questions, more games, and more activities for you all. Uh, every month we have this um, live, Wildlife Live. And uh, well, we don't have a species selected, but obviously we will be posting it in the coming weeks. So mm -hmm. stay tuned for that. Um, and, you know, we will inform you as we go along uh, with the Wildlife Ambassador Program. Right. Just so remember, if you want to be a part, or if you want to um, participate in the Wildlife Protection, what, in the <laughs> Wildlife Ambassador Program, you can follow the link pinned on the first comment. Uh, you can also find the link on our Facebook page um, posted. And you can also find the Wildlife Ambassador um, page in the Belize Wildlife Clinic website, which is bzwildlifeclinic.com slash um, wildlife ambassador. Uh, to register for this program and remember registering for this program and participating in the program will get you into a raffle for a two nights stay for two at Ian Anderson's Cave Branch which includes meals and an, and an adventure tour um, given by the lodge. That is right so you don't want to miss that out we have so much happening and so much to come for the wildlife ambassador program um, if you happen to pass in belmopan and you can get a sneak peek of our um well it's not showing up there oh there you go of our one health uh billboard that is there on the roundabout by uh caribbean chicken which is the corner of um forest drive and the southern highway um you know take a picture post it send it to us and, and let's see um put hashtag wildlife ambassador program um and then you know maybe we can do a little raffle in the future um to see if you guys participate 
But check us out there um, on the billboard. Um, it's very informative and it has the um, One Health concept depicted um, in picture, right? Um, also, this month we will very very soon we will be having our first newsletter. Um, hopefully by May uh, we will publish our uh, first newsletter, and you guys who come in will be helping and assisting with that. Um, and uh, you will be able to get that monthly update on the program and the clinic and um, to see the new things that will be happening. All right. Um, without further ado, I think I, if anybody has any questions, you can uh, go ahead and ask on the comments section or always contact us. Um, I think I left the, the contact information. Yeah, follow us on Instagram, follow, uh, like us on Facebook, visit our website and for all of your wildlife needs, please contact us at 615-5159, right? If you ever have any conflict, right? Halloween, I think we've been through all our schedule for today. Don't know if I'm missing anything. I think that is it. Don't hesitate to contact us and we shall see you. Yes. in our next live which will be posted in the coming days that is right so excited things to come so follow us keep in tune and thank you everyone